Well, I'm often asked how I paint digitally. And the answer is, of course, I paint directly onto a computer. And I use this, which is a uh, digital pen, um, which behaves like a brush when I paint on this. This is the tablet that I use. And it puts brush marks um, onto the surfaces that I paint on. At the moment here I have um, a, uh, a photograph of the concrete just outside the Roslyn Center, which is where Professor Nash actually works. And that's um, what I'm going to use as my canvas here for this painting. I paint with two screens. On my left screen here you're looking at my canvas, the stone. And on my right screen, I have a cluster of photographs which I took when visiting Professor Nash. I love this uh, slightly gentle giant look here. And actually, that's what I'm going to try and get into the painting. So if I go back to my uh, first screen, here I'm painting with a nice, simple, wet acrylic. Um, actually, this paint, I've got a function in it which lets it change color, which I love. As I paint here, it, can you see it gradually changing color? And I just um, build up those lines. Um, there we are. After about uh, 15 minutes, I've got all the lines in, all the structure that I need for the painting. And I'm now going to block in some of the areas with uh, nice wet digital acrylic. This is quite watery acrylic. Um, I have um, wind and gravity as well as water in my, in my paints. Uh, here I'm painting with quite watery paint. And what I'm doing is painting these two color bands and I'm now going to draw down from one, the top, to the bottom to get a nice graduated effect. And all I have to do is just draw it down like that. And I'm going to go on and do this for the, uh, the whole of the canvas so that all areas are covered um, and uh, then everything has a, a first base kind of feel to it. I've got enough rough there we are, enough rough colouring in. Now I'm going to address the uh, structure and um, this shoulder here is actually quite a, an important part of the painting in terms of its composition but I don't want it to have too much prominence I want to save that for the face so what I'm doing here is just uh, taking the shoulder down to map more closely to its background and then I can work um, on the head and give that more uh, both color and a darker tone to help it um, to stand out. So I've established the shirt lines and um, the head just now needs uh, the blocking in and um, and enough um, uh, you know enough to kind of depth to give it um, a, a good starting point for the detail. Let's go in a bit closer now. Just zoom in and now I can work a little bit more um, on the cheeks. I actually want to see what the light's like, so I go back to look at my models and I'll take uh, this model in particular so I can see how the light falls on the nose, the cheek, uh, the neck. So let's, uh, let's just go back and um, get some of this cheek bone uh, correctly, correctly painted in. Now you can see I'm working pretty roughly here. I mean, there's nothing you wouldn't necessarily know that that was Professor Nash. Um, but I'll work up all the side of that head, and that's that done. And now moving on to the nose. And the nose just needs to have the same kind of color, same kind of intensity that the cheek does. And uh, just get a, a nice line on that. There we are. Um, and uh, now working on the socket um, I've done a little bit of purple there um, on the left hand side of the nose and now I'm working it up towards the eye just building up a bit of structural uh, sculptural form to the face and we can just start to see a little bit of form uh, emerge there and now we're about an hour and a half in um, I've worked up the face structure and it's now starting to look a little bit like Professor Nash recognizably him and uh, I'm just making sure that the ear detail here or ear structure is light enough because I want all the light 
to remain on the top uh, part of the head. Again, quite strong colour here, but the light glowing around the edges. Okay, so that's the ear done. Now I just have a quick stand back, make sure that that is broadly looking okay. And now I can move in to start on the detail. And here, I always start on the nose. I love starting on the nose. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's important to get um, the length of the nose right. Um, I, this is just my view, but I think the length of the nose and the eyes are the two most remarkable things about someone's face that we all notice when something is wrong. So I always like to start here. I'm just building up a little bit of um, uh, of the color and the lightness. Uh, I'm taking that from the neck, really, from the right-hand side, and just easing in a bit of structural form there. And um, now I need to think about um, getting the left-hand side of the nose working as well. It's a bit vague at the moment. So we're going to add a bit of... Um, a bit more of this purple, this bluey purple on the left hand side to just make the nose feel a little more sculptural. And then um, I need to do that for the whole of the head and um, that kind of level of basic detail, so starter detail, um, needs to work all the way across the head. There we are. Um, so I can see that's, that's working largely. Again, zoom back, just stand back, have a quick look and um, it looks okay and now I know at this stage painting really is going to work I've now filled in more detail uh, as you can see here gone right around the head and uh, I'm just switching on the canvas now sometimes I switch the canvas off, off when I'm painting and um, here I can see the surface texture is working okay a few black dots in there need to take those out uh, I can come back and get those later but uh, that's about it